If you own a common rail diesel truck, be it a Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, and you're having surging at idle, so where you can hear the engine speed hunt a little bit, or maybe it cr light cruise, 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, light load, where you can feel the engine hunt a little bit and just can't quite maintain a nice smooth operation, a lot of times that problem can be traced back to the fuel pressure regulator. And the problem that the truck is having is it's unable to control its fuel pressure. And as a result, it's getting varying amounts of fuel volume, the torque is changing, and as a result, the engine speed changes. Today, we're gonna to dive into how the fuel pressure regulator works, look at its itty bitty pieces, see what goes wrong, see how we can fix it or not fix it because it's a sealed unit. But it's really interesting to see how it works and I'm gonna show you. So first things first, I got a bunch of dead CP3s laying around here. So we took the regulators off of them and opened them up so we can see what's inside this thing and how it works. Because the first part of knowing how something failed is to know how it's supposed to work correctly. Okay, forgive me if I don't name all these parts right, but you'll get the picture. We have this end here that's pressed in to the housing. The housing is basically a solenoid. So if you look in the housing, you'll see an opening. On the end is a two wire plug. That plug just has two leads on it, okay? Inside that housing is coiled wire and inside there drops this pintle piece. I'm not sure if that's the exact name of it, but resembles a pintle to me. And basically when that coil is energized, it forces this pintle out. A good way to test and see if a regulator is remotely good is to put 12 volts to it briefly, not for a long time and see if it clicks. If it clicks, it's good. It means the pintle system is moving, the slide is moving, the regulator is able to regulate fuel. If I take this new looking regulator, which I think is bad, and I hook wires up to it, and I put power to it, and I don't hear it click, that's a sure sign that the slide is not moving, the pintle is not moving, so for some reason, that pintle is stuck in the bore and the slide mechanism can't work, which means it's not gonna be able to control fuel, which means most likely that regulator is going to be stuck at full rail pressure all the time. You'll know that because the truck will throw P0088 and will run extremely rough and sounds like it wants to come apart. Let's look at how the regulator control system works. Showed you inside the housing, the pintle. Then we have this front half, which I cut away for convenient viewing. Fits on like so. So the pintle, it acts on this, this slide piece. Slide piece sits inside the end of the housing. Now we have fuel pressure that wants to come in this hole right here. So as that fuel pressure comes in, it's going to be its outflow is going to be regulated to these four holes on the outside of the regulator. So in the event that we put fuel pressure to this hole and there's no current, meaning the system's full open, we'd have full fuel flow outflow into the CP3 pump, meaning the pump can make the fullest pressure or move the most fuel volume possible, the most fuel mass. If we put 12 volts to it, that's idle or that's closed. So that's the lowest fuel pressure, the lowest fuel flow we can possibly run. So it's kind of an upside down system in that way that it needs power in order to run less fuel. I cut this slide away because it's interesting to see how the fuel comes in the end here, goes inside the slide, which is held by a spring. And then the position of this slide really dictates how much fuel is allowed to flow through those four holes. Now the really neat thing about this slide is that they changed it from the different years. And tuners or people who are familiar with modifying these trucks will note that the fuel pressure regulator amperage or the current required for different fuel flows changes as you go from an LB7 to an LBZ. If you look at the shape of the slide on this LB7, you can see that it has a very narrow orifice that then goes down to a very large orifice or a rectangle or block shaped. When you go to the LBZ, you have a much different shape. It looks basically like an arrow pointing to the left. That arrow pointing to the left, or those four arrows pointing to the left, dictate 
the shape of the fuel pressure regulator current. So when you put a LBZ regulator in an LB7, it's important that you change the fuel pressure regulator current table to reflect the shapes and this slide. Let's watch the slide move because that's neat. Okay, so if you look at my fingernail, my, in, my index finger, that would be the end of the, uh, the regulator. Up against that end would be the spring, and then the slide would be forced back by the spring. When I apply 12 volts, that slide is gonna be at its lowest orifice, so the least amount of fuel flow. And you can see my fingernails all the way out to the right. As I let off my finger, which doesn't have a spring, but I'm basically using it as a spring, forces the, the whole slide to the left. And as it moves to the left, you get more orifice flow, and that orifice flow allows fuel to go in the end of the regulator and out these four holes around the outside. Okay, Nick, so now I know how the regulator works. It's not rocket science. Why is my truck surging? Okay, so the interesting thing that happens over the life of your truck is that there's a lot of fuel pressure adjustments. The load changes frequently on your truck. Anytime the RPM changes, anytime you hit the throttle, anytime those two things happen at the same time, the position of this pintle moves. And it's gonna move a lot at low load because generally you're operating your truck at low load. So what happens is this pintle gets wear on it. Over time it wears. And if you look closely at the bottom of the pintle, you'll see wear marks on these pieces. The more they wear, the more they don't move nicely. And when things don't move nicely, you don't get good granular control. Why do I say granular? Why not just control? Well, you need the most granular control, the most intricate movement control at very low loads. Because remember, the difference between 10 horsepower and 13 horsepower is a lot different than the difference, is a lot larger than the difference between 130 horsepower and 140 horsepower. If your truck's making 150 horsepower and it's, the fuel pressure pops a little bit and you make 145 or 150, that's not that big of a deal. You're probably not gonna feel that. However, if you're calling for 15 horsepower and your truck jumps to 25 horsepower, that's a problem. You're gonna feel that. That's gonna be a surge. And if it does it continuously, because remember the system's on a PID control, meaning that it is constantly analyzing the actual fuel pressure compared to the desired and adjusting this, that PID control only works when you have smooth movement. So if you overshoot too far one way, you're gonna generally overshoot too far the other way if the system is out of calibration. And it's gonna be out of calibration if you have sticky parts. How else can this happen? You get bad fuel, you park the truck for two years and don't drive it and the fuel degrades in the regulator. Um, all these things we've seen have led to poor regulator performance of one aspect or another. Now, a lot of times the regulator will get stuck in the full on position. And that, in that case, when you first start the truck, you'll immediately notice that the fuel pressure is way too high. You'll feel it lope extremely hard. The truck will feel like it's working way too hard. A lot of rattle, a lot of pinging, a lot of engine noise. That's excessive high rail pressure. And that's just the pump is stuck at full tilt. And I should say full tilt all the way to the left. Um, in that case, the regulator is bad, of course. Now, sometimes you can get around the surge by putting two-stroke uh, oil in the fuel, transmission fluid in the fuel, some sort of lubricity enhancer. And what that's gonna do is free up the regulator uh, pintle in its bore a little bit, allow that slide to move a little more freely. As long as that slide can move freely, we have good fuel control and we can mitigate that surge. Ultimately, what's gonna happen is the regulator is gonna degrade to a point where you're gonna lose control completely and have to replace it. Now there's one last scenario where you might encounter surge. And that's when you first install a low pressure lift pump, like a supplemental pump, call it a Fast 165 Titanium, which is what we sell, or anything in the low side of the system that's gonna increase the fuel flow on the low side of the system and add fuel pressure. Occasionally we see guys put a pump on the low side of the system that's too large for the high side of the system or too high a pressure. So on an LB7, for instance, there's a, 8 to 12 PSI is the desired low end pressure. If you put a pump on that side, on the low side of the system that gives you 25 pounds of pressure, when that pintle goes to move the slide against the spring all the way to the right, it can't hold it there. And what happens is the combination of the spring and the high fuel pressure pushes that slide open and you lose control of rail pressure. And what you'll see is rail pressure will creep from desired, which might be 5,000 PSI, 
up to 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 PSI, it might keep climbing. You might see it, especially when you're off the throttle coasting, where engine speed's a little bit higher and fuel demand is extremely low. In that situation, you're gonna to wanna to check your low side fuel rail pressure, make sure that it's within spec. Again, eight to 12 PSI on an LB7, LBZ, LOI, 20 PSI on a Cummins, or consult whoever you bought the pump from and get their recommended fuel pressure. Long story short, as long as you have good low side pressure and a good performing regulator, you should be able to get away from that surge at low load uh, and idle. If you're watching this video and you think, hey, I have this problem, I'm gonna call these guys and see if I can get them to help me. I'll stop you right there and tell you, we're probably just gonna sell you a regulator and tell you to put it in the truck, or we're gonna tell you to check your low side pressure. If you have found this video helpful, please click the subscribe button. It's hot. I worked hard to get these all apart. Give me something, man. Help me out. I'm Nick Pregnitz. This is Diesel Insights. We'll see you on the next one.